John Mayberry Jr. is a Philadelphia Phillies outfielder. He grew up in Kansas City and is from a baseball family. His father, John Mayberry Sr., played in the major leagues for many years. After high school, where John Mayberry Jr. was a first team all USA player, John was drafted by the Seattle Mariners. But rather than going to the minor league system, John chose to attend Stanford University because of his commitment to education. After his junior year at Stanford, Mayberry was drafted by the Texas Rangers in the 2005 Major League Draft, where he was the 19th player taken overall. In 2008, Mayberry was traded to the Phillies, where he played for their AAA team, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. When the Phillies were in need of an extra bat during the 2009 season, Mayberry was called up. In his first Major League game, he had a three-run home run off the Yankees' Andy Pettit. This season, on opening day, John Pinch hit for the Phillies and hit in the winning run. And last night, he also hit a two-run home run. He has been an important part of the Phillies' current team on its way to the playoffs. John Mayberry Jr. is known for his hard work and commitment to the game of baseball. Please stand to greet John Mayberry Jr. Thank you, guys. Thank you. The first thing that I want to say is, uh, Driving up to this campus, this was absolutely bananas. Uh, this rivals my high school and college um, and blows. I went to St. Paul's Episcopal Day School growing up, and this, this definitely blows it out of the water. But uh, when they asked me to come speak, um, I didn't exactly know what I was going to say. But, you know, as they say, the Lord works in mysterious ways. So Mr. Esman, who has a wife that works with the Phillies, um, happened to intervene yesterday and talked to me for a minute um, and told me about you guys' you know, stripes and the theme of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. So, you know, I was thinking to myself, what could I possibly say? So the first thing that came to mind was, uh, was a player that I had the opportunity to play with, uh, not the biggest name in the world, um, probably, you know, something that you guys have probably wouldn't recognize. His, his name is Armando Galarraga. Um, I played with him in... 2006, 2007, um, when I was a member of the Texas Rangers, uh, the the personality type that I feel like Armando had was, um, you know, somebody that was pretty down to earth, uh, pretty friendly. But one of the jokes that we kind of had on him was that he didn't really know anybody's name. So uh, we actually did a uh, kind of a little quiz um, and basically asked him, you know, who people's names were, and he kind of looked at us like. You know, we'd asked him the, maybe the square root or something. He kind of had this bewildered look on his face and just replied, Poppy. But uh, the reason I brought up Armando was because some of you know, uh, last year, 2010, he had the opportunity to, uh, to complete a feat, which I believe has only been done about 20 times, I believe, in Major League Baseball history, and that's to, to throw a perfect game. Um, but it wasn't the storybook ending that I'm sure that he was hoping for. Um, the 27th out. Jason Donald was a, was a player that actually played with us, hit a ground ball to first base. Miguel Cabrera fielded the ball, flipped it to Galarraga. Um, the replays show, you know, with, with absolute certainty that he was out, but Mr. Joyce uh, decided to call him safe. But I think that the, the lesson that we can kind of learn from Galarraga was, was just looking at his reaction. Um, I think this exemplifies sportsmanship to a T. Um, I feel like 90% probably more than 90% of, uh, of people on this earth would have reacted way differently than he did. Um, you know, his, his, re his reply was a simple, you know, just kind of, uh, just to smile and, and laugh at Mr. Joyce and, you know, not make him feel um, in any way, you know, that he had wronged him, even though he did. Um, but, you know, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like uh, the, the reaction that, uh, that Galarraga gave, which would be, you know, one of compassion and one of humility is something that we can definitely learn from. And it, it, I think it definitely speaks to sportsmanship and um, being the change that we want to see in the world. I think that it speaks to 
Um, you know, all the fruits of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all those things. I think that it touches on those. Um, you know, I feel like it also speaks to um, the golden rule, which is to, you know, do unto others as you should have them do unto you. And, um, you know, I feel like it, uh, it definitely made Mr. Joyce feel a little, uh, uh, a little bit better about, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, he may have uh, cost his kid a perfect game. But um, I feel like you can also learn from Mr. Joyce, which is, you know, to look at his reaction as well, um, just the fact that, um, you know, he showed humility as well. You know, a lot of times umpires are, you know, they're, I don't want to say arrogant, but um, they, uh, they get stuck in their ways, and I feel like that if they make a call, then, you know, it's going to take uh, the end of the world for, for them to realize that they were wrong. But the next day, you know, he came in and was very humble and um, apologized to the kid publicly, and I think that it took a big man to do that. Um, with that being said, I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot. I just uh, wanted to come in and kind of share that story and, you know, witness to you guys a little bit about that. But if you guys have any questions, um, I'd be glad to answer them about, you know, this or, um, you know, the upcoming playoff season. I know that uh, when we had Elvis Gerbach come speak, um, you know, the, the speech was kind of secondary to, uh, to the questions. So I'll, uh, I'll open the floor to you guys. First one. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, that's something that I think, oh, he said, what is it like to, to change your swing in the middle of the season? Well, he's referring to, um, I think, what he's referring to, I think, is the, the crouch that I'm in now, which is a little bit different than when I first came up. Um, it's difficult. I think that many of you guys that, you know, play sports or, or whatnot um, kind of know that the games are, constantly about adjusting so I just felt like it uh, enabled me to you know be a more consistent hitter and um, you know I've worked hard at it and it's uh, it's paid a few dividends so far but oh um, I, wow you how did where did you find that out <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the meeting uh, is actually today, um, so I don't know what your insider source is, but <laughs> you've got some information that uh, I thought was privileged. <laughs> but I guess I'll let you know tomorrow. I don't know what the meeting is about. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, there's, there's a lot of things. Uh, I love to travel. Um, I love to play the game of baseball. I think that you know, like it was mentioned, uh, you know, I've grown up around the game for, you know, pretty much my whole life. So um, I love to be out there. I love to, you know, to play. Um, I love to travel, get to see new cities, uh, meet new people. Um, it's just, uh, I'd say it's great all around. Um, well, this is, this is the only team that I've actually played with uh, in the big leagues. But I can speak from... Uh, the organizational standpoint that, um, you know, this is a first-class organization um, through and through. Um, they treat us great. Um, anything that you could ever want or ask for, um, you know, they're there for you. You've got uh, somebody that you can get in, in touch with uh, that can help you out. Um, and then obviously, you know, this is the, the fans. The, the, this is the best uh, place that I've ever been to to play. Um, you know, you go to some other cities, the Washingtons, the Houstons, um, Florida's where, you know, you have, you're lucky to have 5,000 people. Um, here you're, you're having 45, 50,000 people every night. It makes it a little bit easier to play for. Um, you know, the atmosphere is just electric. Yeah, this has been a question that's, uh, that's been posed to me probably four trillion times since I've signed. <laughs> um, constant, constantly getting asked by reporters, you know, what's it like to have a father that's played in the major leagues, and are you trying to, you know, live up to his billing, live up to, you know, his stats? Well, uh, the, the more I've played, the, the more I've realized how good my dad was. Um, <laughs> 
So I, you can't get too wrapped up in, uh, you know, being a legacy child. Uh, you have to be your own person. Um, you know, definitely set your own goals. And then I think that if, uh, if you achieve your own goals, then you'll be content at the end of the day. So, you know, don't get too wrapped up in, you know, trying to live up to your brother or your father or your sister's, uh, you know, rap sheet or their list of achievements. Uh, you know, be your own person. What's that? Uh, are, are you referring to the five-game slide? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think that, uh, you know, everybody still remains confident. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is a long season, 162-game season, and, um, you know, there's going to be times where, you know, things aren't going your way. Um, but, you know, with the, with the veteran leadership that I feel like we have on this ball club, um, I feel like we'll be perfectly fine. You know, Jimmy, Chase, Ryan, those guys uh, set the tone. Um, and make sure that everybody's where they need to be. So I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, I, I view it as a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, I love to compete. Um, it, uh, it's definitely fun to get out there and compete. So I'll use both of your words in the same sentence. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's something that I've done since as far back as I can remember. And, you know, there's definitely fun elements of it. And uh, at the same time, I love to get out there and hopefully come out on the winning end. You, uh, without notes, you said the fruits of the Spirit, which means you memorized the Scripture. I'm assuming you're therefore a man of faith. Our school tries to emphasize body, mind, and spirit developed in all three. Do you find a relationship between your faith and your, your uh, performance in the field? How does your faith inform who you are as well? Um, that's a very good question. Um, you know, I am a, I am a man of faith. Uh, you know, I've, I've been involved in church and Sunday school and, and whatnot since, uh, again, as far as I can remember, my mom and dad have definitely made sure that, you know, this is one of the, you know, biggest priorities of my, it is the biggest priority of my life. Um, but, you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like, you know, they're definitely going hand in hand. You obviously want to, um, give God the glory and, you know, let him know and give thanks for, you know, the situation that I'm in. I'm thankful every day for the fact that, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to play with the Phillies and, and, and be in the big league. So, you know, I, I pray before every game, um, you know, just to, you know, for the, for the normal things, you know, to keep me healthy and safe, uh, you know, free from all, you know, harm and danger and um, free from injury and things like that. But then, you know, at the same time, I, you know, I, I feel like I take it upon myself to, uh, to try to be the best ball player that I can. I'm I'm six five. <laughs> uh, he said, uh, "Does he think that I'll start in the left next year?" Um, <laughs> I I wish that I had a definitive answer for you on that question, but uh, I don't. I guess we'll just have to let it play out. <laughs> Um, I think that everybody's pretty excited. Um, I think you guys got to see Hunter Pence um, and his extravaganza with the, you know, with the champagne and, you know, spraying champagne all over the fans and going crazy. So um, it's, it's definitely exciting for players like him and me. This will be my first, uh, hopefully, postseason appearance. Um, I've been with the team for the last two years but wasn't on a playoff roster. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited, you know, and I think that I can speak for everybody else when I say that, uh, that they're pretty excited too. Uh, it was great. Um, he was an immediate spark plug to the team. Um, you know, somebody that you know has been consistent over the past four or five seasons, and um, you know he's a great ball player. So he's uh, he's an addition that uh, that we could really use, and you know he's been great so far. So we look forward to to many great years with him. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember anything until I hit third base. Um, it was an absolute blur. Like I, I, the first at bat that I had, I think that my legs might have literally been shaking. Um, I was so nervous and excited, but you know it was great. I had my mom and dad in attendance there, and um, 
you know, it was just an awesome experience. Uh, but like I said, I don't remember anything until I hit the third base. Um, besides Citizens Bank Park, I would say my favorite spot has been the new Yankee Stadium. Um, just walking out of the dugout and looking at the field, it was like an immaculate sight. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just, it was amazing. It was, it was incredible. Um, I would say, she asked me the person I looked up to most on the team. I would probably say Raul Ibanez, uh, even though somebody asked if I'm going to be in left field next year. <laughs> um, I love the guy to death. Uh, you know, he's, I think he exemplifies all the things that, uh, that you would want in a person. You know, he's uh, the ultimate sportsman, the ultimate um, in humility. He's just a great guy. Um, I look up to him both on and off the field. He's had a great career, and he's a great person as well. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question. Um, he asked if I would go uh, out of high school, sign out of high school, or, or go to Stanford. And um, I would say at this point I have no regrets, but I often wonder sometimes what my life would have been like now had I signed. But, um, you know, it was, uh, I, I feel like it was a decision that I made based upon the fact that, you know, you never really know what can happen in baseball. So um, having an education is something that, you know, nobody can take away from you. It's, uh, it's going to be valued and honored for, for the rest of your life. So um, having the opportunity to go to Stanford and, and get my degree was something that I couldn't pass up. Uh, very top yellow tie. Very top yellow tie. Uh, what was the favorite moment in my career? Um, I would say that there's been two. Uh, the first one would be my first hit, the homer off Andy Pettit. Um, like I said, my mom and dad were there, so that was a special, very special time for me. And then the second would be um, the game-winning hit earlier this year. Um, the atmosphere that the fans created um, was second to none that, I, that I've witnessed so far. So um, those two, I would have to say, are, are neck and neck. Yellow tie. <laughs> um, my favorite team to play against? Uh, that one, I don't really know. I don't have an answer for. Um, I like playing everybody. <laughs> okay, yellow tie, top row. <laughs> yeah, you right there. Oh, absolutely. They are, uh, they're the only team thus far that's given me a shot to play in the big leagues, so... <laughs> They, they definitely go to the top of the list. Yeah, I think that uh, baseball is unique in that you get people of all different backgrounds. Um, Conversion on one place, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely um, an interesting thing to kind of look and see what people do in the clubhouse. You know, we have a couple hours for every game to pretty much do whatever. Um, guys like Cole Hamels read. Guys like Roy Halladay study uh, film of, uh, of the opposition. Guys like Chase Utley study film of the opposition. Um, guys like Ryan Howard, Jimmy Rollins listen to music. I mean, you get you get people doing all sorts of different things. Um, I do a little bit of both. Um, read a little bit, listen to a little bit of music. Um, so I guess I'd be the jack of all trades in that regard. Um, mentally, I think that you just have to be, you know, preparing yourself like, you know, you're going to play every day. So um, whenever Charlie comes in and, you know, writes the lineup up, uh, it's not a surprise if you're in there. You just have to... Um, make sure that you're mentally ready to go every day so that, you know, it doesn't catch you off guard if you, uh, if you happen to be in the lineup. All right. Oh. Oh. Uh, 
uh, he asked my favorite and my least favorite player on the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to plead the fifth to the second part of that question, but I don't really, I don't have a least favorite player. I like all the guys. Um, and my favorites, I mean, take your pick as well. I mean, uh, these guys have been great. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot different than, than I, I feel like other ball teams. Uh, I've got some friends that are, you know, younger guys that are on different teams and they say that, you know, the veteran guys give them a particularly hard time. Um, that's not the case here, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty fortunate that, uh, that I've been put in a pretty good situation to be with uh, veteran guys that are pretty nice to the younger ones. Um, first question, if I weren't playing baseball, what would I be doing? Um, I haven't really thought about this. Um, I went to, to school and got a, a degree in political science, so people might say politics, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to do anything with, politi with, you know, with political science or do anything in politics. Um, I'd probably be doing something with, uh, with the front office in baseball, to be honest with you. Um, that's something that I still might pursue after my playing days. And as far as the most difficult thing that I've had to overcome, I would say would just be to have to continue to go up and down that's that's difficult um you know going up and down between the big leagues and triple a you know it's obviously disappointing um to be sent down and you know have to postpone your dream of uh, of being a big league ball player so you just have to stay mentally tough and um you know trust that uh you'll get an opportunity and when you do try to uh, try to make the most of it My favorite pump-up song, uh, I'd, I'd say that differs from, uh, from time to time. I just kind of go with whatever is current. <laughs> um, right now, my walk-up is, uh, is by Ace Hood, the Hustle Hard song. So that gets me, that gets me ready to go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.